Hi, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm, go I'm going to show you how to make a, a truss just like this one. Basically, this truss has six bays, and they all size accordingly when I stretch this. Even if you don't use trusses with AutoCAD, this tutorial will be useful because I'm going to show you a neat trick with the, the stretch action when you're building a dynamic block. A more advanced block is this one. I can actually change the number of bays. It takes a while to build a block like this, but once you build it, it's very, very useful. As you can see, I have separate blocks for the end pieces. Sometimes if a block is too complicated, it either takes way too long to build, or it'll be really hard for people to use that block. So it's okay to break your block up into different segments. So in the video, I'll show you how to change the number of bays, but I won't draw this block from scratch. I have one right here just for that part of the lesson. But for the fir first part of this lesson, I'm going to turn this <clears throat> into this. Okay, so let's go into the block editor. Or first, I'm going to create, turn this into a block. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, and it's quite obvious, is we need a stretch parameter. So I could go linear, add a lin linear parameter, then go to actions, stretch. But instead I'm going to go to parameter sets and just linear stretch. This block will only stretch in one direction. It's nice to have blocks that stretch to the left and to the right. And I could use the linear stretch pair parameter set for that but this tutorial would take way too long you'll probably see as I'm building this block that it basically doubles the work if you're building a block that's actually going to be used then definitely do that it would just you just be repeating steps basically but for this tutorial I'm not going to do that okay so this is my first stretch action that I'm going to add to this parameter I need one stretch stretch action stretch action for every node so one for right here, one for this, and so on. So when I click on this stretch parameter, and this is important, there's a distance multiplier right here, and it's set to one, which is what we want for this particular parameter. So I'm just going to make the action selection set. OK, so we have six bays, right? So I'm going to use my calculator. 1 divided by 6 is 0.1667, let's see. So every stretch action, I want to use this node, but I'll grab my selection set from right here. And in this selection set, I want this member this one and this one and this you don't need to add this and definitely don't add this top chord when you do the center one or it'll actually move your entire top chord I might demonstrate that after just in case you run into that problem okay so our second selection set is done and if I remember correctly it was 0.16667 so that means this stretch action will stretch once or 100% of the distance that we stretch our parameter. This one will stretch one sixth of that distance. So basically we have to do that to four more of these. So I'll go do stretch again.
Now, I don't need to select the chords. It's just a graphical get glitch that this is highlighted, but don't, don't select your chords, just the vertical member and these two diagonals. Not great at math, so two divided by, well, I know what this will be, but I'm just gonna, so one third or 0.3333. So I'll select this right away. Go to my distance multiplier, zero point. So same thing. Oops. Now I'll say this again because it's important, don't select these top and bottom chords because if this isn't the selection set, it'll actually pull these top and bottom chords with this stretch action. So only select the vertical and these two diagonals. Now this one I shouldn't have to do math for, you can probably guess it's gonna be 0.5. This one would be two thirds or 0.6667. Okay, now this time, of course I select the two diagonals, but I will select this bottom chord and just the bottom chord because it has to stretch with this, with this action. So five divided by six, because we're in the fifth bay out of six bay is 0 0.8333. Okay, so I think this is gonna work. Now while we're at it, I'm gonna add the stretch command for the for the vertical portion of this. So I'll go to parameter sets. Near stretch. While we're at it, I'm going to find that middle one. I'm just going to add this parameter to it. This will make our block behave a bit nicer. So when we stretch this, this grip will always stay in the middle of the block. So that's a good trick you can use on, on virtually every, every stretch block that stretches in two directions. Okay, so I'm going to close the block editor. Hopefully this works or I'll have to do another recording. And luckily it does. So as you can see, we have a nice truss block. And if you wanted to add members to this, at least you have your center lines to line them up. One other neat thing you can do is if you wanted to add dimensions to this, perhaps. Let's change my annotative scale here. You can actually do that. Let's see.
So as you can see, we have a live dimension that now updates. Okay, so that's everything you need to know to make a block like this. I'm going to show you how I did this guy right here. So I've already made the block. I'm going to go, in, go into the block editor. Okay, so what I have here is I already have this block made. It's already going to stretch the way I want it. Notice how my, my stretch windows, for example, I'll just draw a rectangle here. When I make my selection set, my stretch window goes through all three trusses. Now you don't need to do that. The reason I did that is just so I could test this before I combine all these together. But in your final block, that won't really make much of, much of a difference. But anyways, to make that, that truss function as I showed you, all you have to do is add a visibility state. And for visibility states, I just go to parameter sets. You can go to, you can add it from here. But I'm just going to add it right here. So I'm just hiding the objects for each state. A good part of the video to, just to skip through. Okay, so when I make blocks with visibility states, I always leave one in this case that shows everything so then I can just move my geometry around and you can delete that extra vis, vis state after or visibility state after if you go in here I'll de delete it let's see can't delete it when it's active so I'll delete it if I want to make a new one I can just select show all existing objects in new state so you can create it really quickly if you if you don't want that extra visibility state in all of your blocks. But for we, for our purposes, I don't I don't think we need this at this point anymore. So I'll delete it. I'll just test everything out, make sure everything's working okay. So one example of where I need that extra visibility state in this case is I, I didn't add a parameter to uh, to stretch it vertically. So in that case, I'd make that visibility state where I can see everything, make that parameter, make the parameter visible in every visibility state, and then just delete that extra visibility state after. But nonetheless, let's see if this works. And it does. Okay, so hopefully you found this useful. It's a, just a how to draw the center lines of a truss, but you can use this technique, especially the multiplier on stretch actions in a lot of different blocks. It's very, very useful. If you like this video, check out the other videos on my channel. 
I'll be making a lot of new dynamic block videos. So check back for those in the future. Thanks a lot for watching.